right now. She said the same thing Carson said that she would. Carson had a lot of followers, you guys, and that's where she met her at. I'm just going to start from there. So she said, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. You know, Tisha already knew. She knew who she was. And she said she brought her to, she brought her to the show to make Mel uncomfortable. She already knew who she was before she arrived. I've been quiet. I've been quiet so long, says Elia. But when I want to bless someone, Nay, you know I come to you, Nay. I come to you with the receipt. Well, Carson said, I asked her to do something that was morally wrong. But Nate, would I ask a stripper in Detroit to do something morally wrong? Now, she's sitting up there now trying to put herself like she's so uh, upper class. And she's going to refer to Carson as a stripper all the way through to make Carson look like she's a lower class person. Nate said, uh, have I ever, nay, have I ever asked you to, to uh, ever told you to leak anything about me? Nay, you know how much I know if I wanted something. No, she's saying, nay, you know if I wanted something leak, I'll come leave you. Nay, say, that's what I'm saying, girl. That's what I'm saying. It's our real lives, says Ariel. I'm not doing something like that. I'm not releasing no poem tape or mail mm, giving head. But Nate said, well, why would she say that out of all things, Ariel? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. Did I see the video? Yes, I did. If I wanted to leak it, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have leaked mail video. But, you know, Carson was trying to get with Marceau. Yeah, that's what she was. And they said, well, she must have thought uh, Marceau had money. Then she called herself Coleslaw. She said, Coleslaw not playing. Coleslaw not playing. Y'all know the ratings was down. They needed me to get their ratings up. When well, they said, yeah, they say you the Twitter later. No, I went under the Twitter later. I lost it. I, I, I lost my Twitter, but I want to get it back. And they said, I know, I, I know it was Melody and them because they were bashing Martell. I've been pissed off, pissed off. I've just been mad. I've been mad. I mean, really mad at this girl. And she even talked about Melody a lot herself. Yeah. You know, I don't even wear wigs. She talked about, you know, uh, she want to meet me. I want to summon them wigs. I don't want to wear wigs. Y'all know what y'all see me in. Y'all know the hairstyle y'all see me in. I, the only ways I ever talked to. Anyway, she says, she DM me. She DM me about this incident, and I DM her back two weeks ago. Later, she just wanted to get on that show, but she would have been better off on the show had she not mentioned my name. You know, I know that we, I, I know that she just want to use me for bait for a cloth. Yeah, Nate said that she drop a bug. Yeah, she dropped that bug first to Tisha, but Tisha. Tisha, you know, she she, she, uh, she would have better off, been better off not even talking about me. I wanted Stormy. I wanted to talk about Stormy. I heard Stormy speak about me, and our conversation that me and Stormy had is not public. All the sh she said about me, and then gonna go on this show and act like she don't know me. Whatever, it's fine. Yeah, she, yeah, Stormy knows she know me. She knows she know me. They tried, her and Courtney tried to uh, pretend like they don't even know me. That's what they try to pretend like. But it's a lie. She know me more than what she say she do. 
Then Nate going to say, well, yeah, you know, they bully Stormy. Oh, they do? What do they do? How do they bully Stormy, says Ari? Well, uh, somebody popped up at a warehouse. They talking about her business real bad, talking about her mama. They just bashing Stormy. Yeah, it, 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 um, yeah, a lot of stuff she said, Nate, that I know about Melody, but I won't put it out. No, I won't put it out. If I wanted to put it out, that porn tape of Mel, I would have put it out. Nate said, hold on, hold on, hold on. You mean, uh, was it? Her giving head to another man? What uh, 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 What you mean, said Ariel? Well, the girl said, Martell wanted you to put a tape out from another, from another uh, page what Mar where uh, Mel is giving, uh, doing uh, something to another man. Yeah, that's how she put it, like it was another man. Okay, uh, uh, okay, well, oh, you know, Carson's story was right. It was right, yeah. It was right, Carson Stork. What she what she said, she was right. But she mad about me. He got mad about me about talking about it to her. But I felt some kind of way because all I was doing was trying to uh, uh, tell her that Martel asked me to do something morally wrong and I was feeling a kind of way. Now, why would she get mad? at me when I was trying to talk to a friend about something that my ex asked me to do morally wrong. I'm paraphrasing now, y'all. <laughs> Nate said, did you ever say you consider it? Did you ever say you, you would consider it? Oh, Nate said, uh, yeah, but what about my tail? I'm still tripping the fact that you know, Martell would even ask you. That blows me away. Then Arian admitted, yeah, 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 he did. He did. Yeah, he did. You know how that is. She said, it ain't nothing to talk about, but you know, they they both, we're going to put it like this. They both are the puppet, puppet masters, public puppet master. That's what they are. Yeah. And then she said, uh, you know, she, you know, this is Arian. Arian has admitted that she has the tape in her possession, you guys. She's admitted that, you know, she could put it out if she want to. She's admitted that Martell asked her to put the tape out. She's admitted that she had it in her possession. She even admitted that she knows Stormy, that her and Stormy talk. She said Stormy be in her, everything she got is in her DM. She got it to prove, but it's not public. She even said that, um, she even said that, this is how she put it. When she said, it's blowing my mind that uh, 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 that uh, Mel will be doing it with another man. That's what I'm talking about. And then she said, like, what you mean? What you mean? She got confused. Then she said, um, well, um, no, 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 no. It's with my tail. And so uh, she said, my tail. And they said that you... Nate said that Martell was getting mad because you did not want to release the porn tape. That's what she said. The girl said, and the girl even said that, uh, you know, Martell was really, real mad at you. That's what you told her. Well, 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 well uh, Carson did tell the truth, she said. The girl told the truth. It was like that. The girl told the truth, she said. Yeah, she told the truth. And my tail, and then she said, I got it. I, it it's, it's in my possession right now. If I want to release it right now, I would. I can release that tape right now. Right now, I can release that tape. Yeah, let's put it back up here, y'all, so y'all can see. Oops. Yeah, right now, right now. She said, I can release that tape right now if I want to. But I don't want to do that to Mel. 
I got it in my position, but I don't want to do her like that. You're right. Y'all since when she spared me a feeling. All right. <clears throat> and then Nate said, well, you know, Mel, she did a lot of stuff to people. A lot of stuff to people. They trying to say you were that twiddle later, girl. You were that twiddle later, but I know it was Mel and them, them. Mel did a lot of stuff this night, y'all. She messed up with your mind mentally. She messed up. She messed up a lot of people's mind mentally on oh, mental health mind on this internet. Girl, Mel must have a lot of power to be messing up people's mind mentally. I take it that Straight No Chaser, the original Straight No Chaser, is not a fan of Melody, y'all. <laughs> yeah, she said, Melody. All right. So she want to get back to the tape. Now, this girl want to get back to the tape. Then she said, uh, I mean, she said, you smell the mess with a lot of people, man, mentally. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of people want to mess her or, or, or do something to her or something like that. Oh, oh yeah, I want to want to keep her quiet. That's what she said. Then she said, uh, they said, the fact is you was about to do. You was about to do it. Well, you gonna do that, girl? And then did that man really ask you that? I can't believe that that man asked you that. Yeah, Nick, she said yes. Now I'm gonna repeat it again. The fact that he was about to ask you to do that really surprised me. Talk about my tail. She said, "Yeah, Nick. They both been the public." Matt puppet master to each other, and that's all I got to say. This girl admitted that she had the tape. She can I release the tape right now. I can release the tape right now, Nate. Nate said, "Well, release it then. Release it to me. You know, I bring. I when I want to say something, I come to you. I come to you with all the receipts. I don't go to other bloggers. I come to you, Nate." Yeah, I got the tape. Yeah, he asked me to do it. Yeah, I know Stormy. Yeah, me and Stormy, whatever we say is private. It's in my DM. I got the receipt. Tisha just wanted to make Melody feel uncomfortable. That's why she bought it on there. But y'all know what? It backfired on Tisha. Because her and Carson got into it. Her and Carson got into it. They almost got in a blow up fight, according to uh uh what I heard. Um the tea lady was telling that yeah, Carson and, and, and uh the tea lady, the host, oh I forgot her name, she said that Carson and Tisha got into it, y'all. So uh, it, whatever Tisha was trying to do backfired on her. Anyway, this girl said they both are the puppet master, and I am going to leave it at that. So all I got to say, if I got three voices, three voices to do with the bad boy, y'all. Let's hit it. Come on, y'all. Let's hit it. I need all of y'all to help me do my bad boy song. Y'all know I got to do three voices. It was her. I got to do alto, soprano, and tenor. See, Stormy only get two. Stormy just get alto and soprano. I'm going to start off with the alto. But uh, the tenor for bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? Now, soprano, bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? What you gonna do when you come for you? Now, uh, Alto. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? You hear that? You going to jail, girl. You going to jail. Lock them up. Lock them up. Lock Martell up. Lock Arian up. 
she she finally accepted her name as Cole Snow. I'ma leave it like that in my soprano voice. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? her life she like she's just been lying um i have nothing to say to her um she said that what she say and god don't forget to hit that like button now. This is Queen Sheba now. Now here's go to second admission with Martel. Everything that happens to Melody, Martel is the head snake. And the rest of them just follow through with whatever. They're, he pulls them like a puppet. But anyway, here is Queen Lashiva talking to Martel. I just like to say that you guys, I haven't been able to come on live because this thing with my brother is stressing me out. They did transfer him to a rehabilitation center. I haven't been having have to spend the night up there with him. He's able to walk. There's nothing wrong with him physically, but mentally he done, he done had another seizure, so he's back confused, and they can't do anything with him. So I have to stay there day and night with him, you guys. So that's why I haven't been able to come uh, to um, to uh, come live with you guys. But I want to just say that I took time out. Oh, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I took time out to come home and take a shower. I'm going to take my clothes off. I mean, put on some fresh clothes and back up there I am. But I did think about you guys to put out this tape. Anyway, this is Queen Sheba. This is Queen Sheba and Martel. I mean, I everybody make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. So, um, just leave it right there. Yeah. But uh, did you have a conversation about the way that backfired on you? Because it's not good right now. Did you sit down um, and say, listen, when I talk to you about what's going on, you know, and I'm sharing with you as a woman, you know, then what, however long that was, that's not for you to go to somebody else as so a man. Listen, so listen, um, this happened over a year and a half ago. Mel and I, we talked about it a year and a half ago. We talked about it with Carlos a year and a half ago, and we talked to our attorneys about it. So my thing is, Carson, I saw her, her live whatever, and she mentioned, she referenced Melody about three times on there. Was it two or three? Yeah, I think you know, you be. You, you, you do know how many times she Keep referenced? Keep going. I'm, I'm following. I'm trying to process. Okay, so, so, so she, re she referenced Melody about two or three times. So I'm like, how is she so for certain that Melody got this information unless you already talked to Melody? And so again, if anything, Ariel could Ariel could only have said um Martel um is really upset and he's talking about um putting out a um a sex tape of Melody or something like that. I know Ariel didn't go to her and say that Martel's talking about me creating a fake page and want me to post like why would I need her to create a fake page and post one? I can create a fake page and post it. You know what I'm saying? But how do you think, feel about Arian just talking too much and oversharing? Sometimes I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. You know? At all. Um, so, so some people, you know, they make mistakes. You know, I've um, I, that's taken care of. And some people just make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. What I'm talking about? That Everybody static is on his um, phone, y'all. So, but that's beside the point. The, the the major point is, you know, Melanie could have called me. Opposed to going online. Uh, -uh. And, that's not that's not her responsibility. No, no, no. Let's no, not no. do that. That's not her responsibility. If Arion no, is having, no, no. hold on. If Arion is having, let's not do that because that's not your responsibility. If somebody's telling Melody, it's not your responsibility. If Arion is having a conversation, over a year and a half ago, never. If Arion is having a conversation that you don't know she's having, and Melody yeah. does, she's having. You're both over here. That is not Melody's right. responsibility to pick up the phone, no. to call you about what Ariane is doing. You don't even no. know. So I guess no, you, you, you're not you're not understanding what I was saying. I'm, I, I'm following you. Okay, what what I'm saying is when when Carson went live, uh -huh. and, I, and I feel that if it, if it wasn't if it wasn't orchestrated by 
I don't know, by Melody and Carson. I don't know, because again, Carson mentioned Melody's name two or three times, saying that Melody, y'all go ask Melody. I'm pretty sure she got the tape, or Melody got something. And I'm like, damn, they must have orchestrated something. Um, once Carson did all her stuff, I'm trying that to flip the story, y'all. Uh... And, and Martell, what did you share with Ariel? Opposed to going online, dragging me, making making me seem like I actually. Put she didn't drag she said there's a tape i listened to it i heard her say because i like to listen in the bushes and she, she said there she is a tape that she, does exist she, she drugged me she don't know she don't know if it's a video that that exists she doesn't know that she did I, 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 I sent her a screenshot i did i sent okay. her screen i sent her a screenshot um of, of of her and i i did i sent her a screenshot and i sent you did you see that that text message in your phone i mean that uh my pr sent to you there were so many images. I got to as many. There you go, you guys. Y'all heard it from his mouth. Y'all heard it from. Y'all heard it from his mouth. Y'all heard it from her mouth too. That one of our and that static that y'all hear, the static that you guys hear is in his phone, you guys. Y'all heard it from both of their mouth, admitting that they was conspired to do something to Melody would release that tape but anyway this is a perfect example of the bully calling the victim the bully the bully blaming the victim for bullying them you know you're the bully you're the one harassing me when the bully is the one that does everything but put the blame on the victim it's sad he a sad excuse for a man this lady got four children with him. And his baby mama over there, Ariel, nothing never good going to come to you. You know, she she's evil, you guys. She's evil. They both evil. The richest man in history was a black man named Mansa Musa, you guys. When the topic of the richest people in the world comes up, names like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates come to mind. But if we go back in history and tell you that the richest person of all time is not only from the billionaires of today's technology field and the transportation poles of the industrial age, but also from the greatest rulers of the world, Augustus Caesar and William the Conqueror was richer. Historians say the world's richest man was a man named Mansa Musa, a 14th century West African ruler whose wealth, according to the BBC, was indescribable and unlimited. But who was he and why might you not have heard his name? Mansa means sultan or emperor in the Mandinka language. This is yesterday. According world. to BBC, Musa Keita was born around 1280 during the reign of the Keita dynasty. He came to power in 1312 when his brother Mansa Abu Bakr abdicated to go on a sea voyage. According to historians and the British Museum, the Mali Empire was the world's largest gold producer at the time and held more than half of the world's gold reserves. According to National Geographic, with Moses on the throne, trade flourished in the region, and its wealth from salt and gold mining, as well as the ivory trade, skyrocketed. But it was not only salt and gold that increased Moses' wealth. During his reign, the territory of the Mali Empire expanded 3,000 kilometers, from the Atlantic Ocean to present-day Niger, and more than 24 cities were annexed. It is said that he never lost a battle and in many cases, the territories voluntarily joined the Mali Empire because of the higher quality of life. Musa was a devout Muslim and started his pilgrimage to Mecca between 1324 and 1325 AD, which is now known as the most expensive pilgrimage in human history. He wanted to spread his fame around the world and the 6,500 kilometers trip was a good opportunity. According to the BBC, the Mali king left for Mecca with 60,000 people, from court officials to servants and slaves. It is said that most of these passengers were fully dressed in Persian silk and silk, even the slaves. About 100 camels were carrying loads of pure gold. He and his companions crossed the great African Sahara and reached Cairo. Musa spent- You have to go to yesterday world to hear the rest of this. 
but the richest man in the world was Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa, you guys. You guys need to know that story. He, was, he really was a great leader, and he, he did a lot for his people. Anyway, Mansa Musa, story of the wealthiest man in the world. Mansa Musa. Oh, yeah, a black man was the richest man in the world. Yeah, let's see what this one says. Mansa Musa is probably Mali's most popular ruler. He's even more popular than his great uncle, Sundiata, who was the founder of the Mali Empire. And just like Sundiata and most of the other Mali emperors, Mansa Musa was also from the Kita clan. He came to power in 1307 and ruled until about 1332. We mentioned, of course, that the word Mansa means king. Many people think that Mansa is Mansa Musa's first name. It's not, it's his title. His actual first name was Kan Kan. And Kan Kan means the son of Kan Ku, and Kan Ku was the name of his mother. So his full name was Mansa Kan Kan Musa Kita. But everyone pretty much just says Mansa Musa. Of course, Mansa Musa is most famous for his epic, and we do mean epic, Hajj pilgrimage that he took in the year 1324. Now, the Hajj trip, at least from Mali to Cairo, which was the final staging ground before going into the Arabian Peninsula, this would have taken eight months. Before he even departed on his journey, Mansa Musa sent 500 slaves to meet the Sultan of Cairo, the Sultan of Egypt, each slave carried a golden staff, and altogether, these 500 golden staffs would have weighed nearly a ton. So before he even goes out of Mali, we're in the preliminaries, and he's already sending a ton of gold into Cairo. At this point in time, the uh, Egypt was ruled by the Mamluks, and so the sultan here would have been uh, a Mamluk king. Now, when he finally did leave, his caravan included 100 camels, each one of them carrying 300 pounds of gold. Altogether, when you do, do the math, altogether that would have been almost 15 tons of gold. Now, in addition to, of course, the 100 camels carrying gold, he would, his caravan would have also included hundreds of camels carrying equipment and supplies. Now, there are different estimates about how many people actually accompanied Mansa Musa on this pilgrimage. The numbers range from as low as 20,000 to as high as 60,000, and most of them, most of them are the soldiers and slaves. But the fact that there were so many slaves in Mansa Musa's retinue, that's an indication that Mansa Musa had conquered a lot of the territory in his time. People didn't just become slaves by accident. People became slaves when their lands were conquered. Now, when Mansa Musa finally arrived in Cairo, it was an amazing spectacle. The historians write how people crowded in the streets to watch him and his caravan as they wound their way through the tight streets of Cairo. And there's a whole lot of talk about when Mansa Musa purchased something, he always paid for it in gold. So you're watching the richest black man in the world, Hi. which was Mansa Musa, you guys. And that was by Islamic guidance, okay? You guys read up on it. I can't take all of his stuff, but go and read up on Mansa Musa. In fact, the richest man ever in history was a black man named Mansa Musa. He was an African. <laughs> 